Okay, so what I'm going to do here is pick Subaru. And this is the Think Car tool. So it went in. There we go. So area select. We are in North America. That's all the right info. I always like looking at least at the last six of the VIN. And it does match up on this car. So now it's going to communicate. It is a Outback. And we're going to do a health report first. So it's scanning all of the modules. Notice we have a code in the engine, a code in TPMS. And you got to remember, so this is a 2015. Well, 15, let's say this is 24, 15, we're nine years old, and I bet the sensors were probably made a year or two before they went in the car. Little batteries in them are going to go dead. When you're selling people a new tire, you may want to mention to them, hey, it's a good idea to change your TPMS sensors cheaper while we have the tire off. Okay, so now we look at the whole report here. We come up with three codes, tire pressure and air condition code, sun load sensor. That could be just from being inside, but it had the engine is a P1603 engine stall history. So you may want to look at that. And then we go down the rest of the list. It's good. If we hit a report, I'm just going to hit OK here. I uh, want some mileage. I think it was 96,000 or another. So now it makes a whole report, as you can see here. And it tells you what passed, what failed, which is pretty nice. And you could email this to the customer by sharing it. You can print it if you have your computer set up. So if I do email and I type in my email, it's going to come. I'm not going to do that in the sake of time, but believe me, it does work. So here we can go out of the report. We can go into the code. And look at this. They'll give you some of these it'll pull up some information for you via the internet, which is pretty damn cool, right? I'm gonna clear these DTCs out. That way the guys can take a peek out of it and we'll see if any of them come back. Well, the engine came right back. And it's pretty quick. And now I'll go in this way. It at least reminds you of, hey, you got the OBD2 connector in the vehicle. And by the way, I don't know if Doreen can get on this, but look at, look at this OBD2 connector. Watch this. So it's magnetic, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and it has like plastic on it so you don't have a problem. So you can do, we'll get back into that area real quick. That is correct. And any questions while we're waiting? Uh. So you can look into the engine here <laughs> so here's the, here's the fault code that we've seen. Let's look at some data stream. And sorry about my finger hitting the button there quick. Um, and Subarus, usually most companies don't do Subaru all that well. This seems to do a nice job. And these are all the informations I can use to look at the air fuel sensor, current, 
sensor one, and you could do select all, and now it's going to give me data on all of them. And of course, that slows everything up. Now, you see this here, 2.2 .2 volts? And you could graph that sensor, okay? But Subarus are 2.4 when they're running well. 2.2 is going to tell you the lower number means it's rich, not lean. And look at all the data you have here. I mean, some's not going to fill in. It's going to take a little bit of time there. Battery voltage, you can see I'm maintaining it at 14-something. And look at the current you're pulling just from the OBD2 tool and stuff on. Five amps you're pulling out. And by the way, not a bad idea sometimes to look at that to see how much current. Catalyst temperature, okay? So the catalyst is cold. And again, you can see it's going to fill in. I'm just going to scroll down here and give you some more stuff to look at. It doesn't like a value here that you see in a, you got misfire information. And look, look how many PIDs. Look at this. 249 different PIDs that they can give you. And if we get out of this and go to actuation test, Fuel pump relay. Let's do it with data monitoring. So if you wanted to see something, you could select the PID here and actually, I mean, I think it could make a bit of difference, but if you did activate it and you were on a fuel pump one, I shouldn't have picked that one, but you get the idea. You could see if, it's actually working or not, which is pretty cool. So there's a bunch of stuff here, idle, idle control, idle stepper motor, injectors, be careful with injectors, compression monitor, gotta be in neutral, pretty neat. So you can enter the VIN number, oil change reset, without tool, test mode change. So test mode, normal mode, transition mode to check. This is something like Toyota does. You can put it into a mode to find out what the vehicle is doing if it has an issue. So it's more sensitive on codes. We can go into body module here and maybe we can make the horn beep Key buzzer output, horn output, look at that. We'll do without monitoring. Okay, so now you know it works. So a pretty capable scan tool here. And look at all the other, oop, and hit stop. Look at all the other systems it has here. You no know, airbag, air conditioning, keyless entry start, headlight, fog light, infotainment system. Okay, some things are not communicating, which is normal on most scan tools. No codes in the brake system, which is good. So a great little tool for a small amount of money. You know, when I say small amount of money, a mobilizer, check if ignition switch is turned on, close doors, hit OK. So you can do a smart scan, a manual scan, we're going to get out of it. But at least it can do some of that stuff. You can select different systems. And we'll leave it at that.